Hello, uh, my name is Jim Jansen, and I'm going to be talking about data-driven personas and the potential harm and shortcomings that they have, even though they are a emerging area in the field of personas. Uh, my two collaborators on this project are Yoni Solomon and uh, Sun Yul Jung. Uh, we're all from the Qatar Computing Research Institute in Doha, Qatar. What I'm, uh, my outline is I'm going to introduce data-driven personas uh, very briefly, then show a working data-driven persona system, and then end with a short uh, highlight of the criticisms of data-driven personas. And you can read about uh, more details of uh, the criticisms in the abstract and then the follow-on paper. We have been uh, researching data-driven personas and developing data-driven persona systems for about five years now. And so we define it as a persona profile uh, created in a template using uh, quantitative data about a given uh, user population. And those, uh, this persona is created using statistical techniques, including data science and machine learning algorithms. The uh, data-driven persona advocates, which uh, we kind of consider ourselves uh, among, uh, see these uh, personas uh, superior to manually created personas, offering a solution to the problems of uh, uh, manual uh, persona creation. With data-driven personas uh, generation, we take a lot of numbers and generate uh, a very complete persona profile. Uh, so this has you know, certain advantages, especially for organizations with large user populations. Why uh, uh, the push for data-driven personas? Well, uh, manually created personas have been criticized as for being expensive, uh, slow to create, and uh, they can quickly stale, meaning uh, organizations cannot be certain that these personas no longer represent uh, their user or customer base. So uh, the data-driven uh, solution uh, tackles this by using really online analytics data, uh, faster creation, <laughs> excuse me, faster creation, and we can update uh, frequently uh, in our particular system. We update monthly. So the idea is we can have better personas, uh, better decisions, make better results. And we are certainly persona advocates that uh, they are beneficial to organizations. Our data-driven persona system is APG, Automatic Persona Generation, and we take uh, web analytics, uh, website data, and also customer relations data in large quantities, tens of millions, and then we automatically generate personas from them. We have an online system. It can currently uh, generate personas from multiple uh, social media platforms. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Google Analytics, and then again, of course, with individual customer data. The system is very robust. We're handling tens of millions of user interactions for many large corporations. Uh, we run an open source backend database and then leverage Panda uh, libraries for a lot of the manipulation and presentation. One advantage of, of a data-driven persona system is that it's really full stack. We have these personas at uh, the strategic level, and then we also have operational statistics and probabilities. And then at the tactical level, we still have the numbers about the individual users. So it goes from this uh, abstract representation to concrete uh, with numbers all in one system. A data-driven persona system also gives uh, many advantages that uh, a persona in either a regular persona or a data-driven persona in a flat file, a piece of paper, a PDF, something like that, uh, doesn't have. For example, we can generate multiple uh, numbers of personas from the same data sets. And our particular system goes from 5 to 15, but we can generate hundreds. And then uh, we can save these personas and uh, our users can save these personas and uh, interact with the personas that interest them most and then study the data at different levels of granularity. 
We can also do uh, using a variety of algorithmic approaches, uh, calculate things like loyalty, sentiment, interest, uh, how big uh, the user segment this particular persona represents. So it gives great insights about uh, the user base. We can also manip manipulate different views, showing like personas to products or features and then flipping it and uh, and showing um, uh, personas to those products. And then we can also show personas over time, right? So every data collection, as I said, we do it monthly, so we can generate these personas every month and then see the change or stability in personas over time. So who are your core customers? Who are your infrequent customers? Uh, and however, you know, even though we are advocates of this approach, we are also realistic in that there are faults, right? And it's become increasingly clear to us after five years of uh, using this particular approach that an over-reliance on data and algorithms, that both the use and the development of data-driven personas is really marred and has uh, many challenges. So we, uh, in our paper, we outline nine uh, particular challenges. Uh, and we, in this particular table, we uh, list the nine challenges. They all apply to data different personas, but they also apply to personas in general, whether, you know, regardless of the uh, creation method. So uh, I'll just kind of touch on here, uh, inflated expectations. Uh, I think this kind of mystique of numbers uh, has an effect here that uh, I think these data-driven personas are, uh, you know, the end-all and can uh, really solve a lot of design, marketing, advertising problems uh, when they really can't. I mean, there's, it's, they can help, uh, but, uh, you know, the expectations are some higher, sometimes higher than, uh, than the final product. Uh, algorithmic bias. Um, I think there is a naive view that uh, you pump data into an algorithm that gives you the answer, and that is just not true. I mean, I'm a computer scientist. Algorithms have bias uh, based on either for well, a variety of, 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 of reasons, and so uh, creators of data-driven personas have to be have to realize and be cognizant of that academic bias. The lack of standards. I think this applies to persona in general, but uh, definitely data-driven personas, a variety of algorithmic approaches, what's included, what not. Then difficulty of use, again, this applies to both uh, to personas in general. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism of you know, how actionable they are, uh, and I think it's a fair criticism. I think we in the persona field have not articulated this uh, as uh, directly and as uh, efficiently as we could. The, there's a kind of a uh, superficiality to some of these data-driven personas. I would say it can apply to uh, data-driven, uh, to manually uh, created personas, but it definitely applies to data-driven personas that uh, if a, a direct reliance on algorithm without some type of manual or qualitative uh, human touch, okay, they are very superficial in terms of understanding users or customers. <coughs> Excuse me, there's a problem of uh, aggregation. <coughs> Excuse me. That if you take data from, <coughs> from multiple different data sources and integrate them together, uh, you know, that is uh, difficult to do. Uh, there is um, <coughs> the problem of averages uh, that a lot of times we, uh, with these data, uh, with this data, online data, uh, it is so broad, has such high variance that uh, we rely on averages. And a lot of times the, <coughs> the average really represents, you know, no individual person. Uh, there's a technical uh, 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 cost to developing the personas that uh, is, is you know, many times quite challenging. And then also, uh, finally, if they are not integrated uh, with a, the organizational workflow, they are, you know, sidelined and irrelevant, especially in ages of data for personalization, 
where you can personalize not on an individual, excuse me, not on a segment, but actually personalize on an individual. And so, uh, you know, some some critics of personas have pointed out that, well, why should I segment at all when I have data on each individual customer, each individual person, each individual user for my system. So uh, yeah, those are some of the challenges of data-driven personas. I think uh, we in the field uh, have to uh, uh, work to address these challenges to make data-driven personas and personas in general relevant to organizations. With that, thank you very much and I appreciate your, your time and interest.